everyone, I'm Dave Thomas, and today I am building the Little Joe 1. This is a scale model of a test rocket used during the Mercury program. And like all of our kits, the first thing we want to do is open this up and make sure we have all the parts. Inside the main package, we have several sub-packages here. Uh, and so, first of all, we have the uh, instructions and the fin stock and some reducer material here that's in one package and we're going to open this one up because it's going to have the parts list for the rest of the rocket so carefully pull out those instructions this is um, a skill level 3 rocket which on their old scale it's an intermediate rocket so it's got a lot more detail to it and you definitely wanted to have built several rockets before going to this one okay so let's go through here there's several other smaller packages uh, we can start here with the body tubes there are two of them And then in this small parts package, we have materials here for the coupler, for the capsule, um, the top of the capsule there, the escape rocket uh, frame and parts. So this is basically everything here that's in black and red on the illustration. Alright, and then in another package we have all the nozzle parts. And so that's shown down in here. And it, I'm not sure yet, but I think um, the nozzles can actually be left in place. We'll come to that, we'll come back to that later. That'd be kind of cool. Alright, then in another small parts package we've got basically all the engine mount pieces, except for the centering rings. Uh, we've got a, an engine block, an engine sleeve, clip, launch lug, parachute, and shock cord. Okay, so that's basically all the stuff here, here, and here. And then in this bigger package, Okay, so these are the centering rings, and that shows the, the knockouts for the nozzles as well. And then some of these rings will be for a reducer. And the rest of that reducer is here. Okay, and then we have the fin stock here, and it's in two sheets. Uh, they're basically identical here, but we've got the um, main fins with fin tabs and then we've got um, lots of little detail pieces here and then it looks like we also have um, cardboard cutouts and these will be used to paper the fins. Right, this is the first time I've actually seen a kit that comes with lamination with it here. That's what this is showing here. Okay, so it looks like probably we'll knock out these little holes here, it saves a little weight, and then we'll um, cover the fins after all the little doodads have been attached there. And then finally, we have a sheet of water transfer decals. Alright, and so let's go back to the main sheet once more. that looks like we've got everything. Okay, so all the parts are here. I'm going to clear this away and we will get started. Opening up the instructions here, our first task is to assemble the escape tower and the capsule. And those parts are all in this bag. And for gluing these, I recommend using a brush-on type of cement. They indicate just kind of a, a general purpose a plastic cement of a tube type. 
Um, tube type cements tend to be a lot thicker and they tend to make little cobwebs all over the place. Um, I think the, this allows um, a more precise application of the glue with a little less mess. And since we're doing everything plastic to plastic, we really don't need the um, viscosity of the tube type glue to hold things in place. So first I'm just going to get all these plastic pieces out. Alright, so we want to do this on something that protects our surface here. So I've just got a few layers of paper towels. I'm going to move this a little out of the way. Alright, so first of all we need to find the base here and put it together. It's got a little cap that goes on it. So there's the cap. And here's the base. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just place this on. Now the cap here has a triangular shape to it. And if you look closely, let me bring this up. All right, there are three pairs of holes in this base assembly, and so that's where the tower pieces are going to go here. And so the um, cap here needs to line up so that the um, triangles here are in between the holes. And so once we've got that, let's go ahead and take our cement here. I'm going to put right on the outside of this little insert. Okay, now one of the disadvantages of this brush-on type cement is that it dries pretty quickly. And so we want to be very quick and deliberate in how we put this together. Okay, I'm just going to pop that down and recheck it. That looks pretty good. Alright, and then coming back to our instructions here. I'll move some of this out of the way. Alright, so on the brackets here, um, these are going to go in here. So the, the little forked area here, that's going to go into those two holes. And then there's a little tiny hole here, and that's where the point of the triangle attaches. Okay, so you may have to do a little bending around here. Okay, and then as we put each one of these on, the, the corners will glue into the previous ones, um, little holes there as well. So once again here, all right, I'm going to put some glue on each of the holes. And then up on the tip of the triangle there. Okay, move this over a little bit. All right. Holes go there and there. And you just want to hold this for a few seconds to let that glue adhere. All right, and we'll see if I can risk doing the others all at once here. So I'm just going to repeat that same process. Maybe some glue in the holes there. A little more glue. And then some on that triangle. Okay. 
Now we've also got holes here, here, and here. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We want to do all of these at the same time. So I'm going to put some glue there. Okay, and now, not only do I need to get these in, okay, but I need to get all of the little pegs and holes in here. same time, preferably without gluing myself to it. Well, I think what I'm going to do then is not try to do it all at once. So I'm going to first start by just getting them in the holes on the base and onto the triangle. And then we'll put the upper ones on after the, the base pieces here have dried well. Make sure you can see all that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this third piece. Alright, so the holes there. And a little triangle. Again, I'm not going to worry about doing the rest of the bracket there until this part dries. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry there for several minutes, maybe up to about 15. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and move that aside here. Uh, I'm going to assemble the escape rocket here. Okay, now this just goes together in two halves like this. So first I'm just going to dry fit this. It kind of snaps together. And then make sure we don't have any big pieces out here. Okay, that all looks fine. So I'm open that back up. Alright, now there's going to be a hole in the top and we don't want to fill that in. Um, but we do want to go along the edges here. So just take your cement, just put on a thin layer pretty much all the way around this. And don't let it drip to the outside. If you're going to drip, let it drip to the inside. And now we're going to put this back together again. coming out of that seam, I'm just going to wipe it off a little. Okay, we can let that dry. Alright. My camera unexpectedly stopped recording while I was in the middle of assembling this. So what I've done um, since the previous clip there was attach this base, okay, which is this step here. And then after that was attached, I've attached this nozzle assembly that goes right in the middle of it. Okay, so our escape rocket is about half done here. Next we need to cut off these nozzles. Just use your hobby knife for that. And they do launch across the table. Be careful of that. That's how you know these are good nozzles. They want to go flying even before they're attached to the rocket. Alright, so once you've got those off, if you need to, you can kind of trim that a little bit. Uh, and you can either use your hobby knife or some very fine sandpaper, depending on the state of it. 
And I'm just going to try and shave a little bit of this off. Alright. And now these are going to get glued onto here. Alright, they're supposed to stick out about like that. So you'll, you'll kind of feel it as it goes in there. Um, they don't actually rest against that central nozzle assembly though. So this you're going to need a little bit of patience for. Uh, so we'll need to do these one at a time. So here I'm just going to put a little dab of glue onto one of the little holes there. All right, and then I take my nozzle and I'm going to push that in. And I'm going to have to hold this here for quite a few seconds. So I will finish this one off camera and then add the other two as well before coming back. I have all of the nozzles attached, but it's still kind of shaky there. So I'm just going to move this over for now and let it finish drying. Back here on the scaffolding, we can go ahead and now attach the sides to each other. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and apply the glue to each of these triangles into that top piece there and then those are going to go in little holes that are on the adjacent piece here. And I'm just going to try and do this one side at a time all right, so we don't have to try and hold all three sides at once. And once again, I'll let this dry for a little bit, and then I'll do the other two corners off camera. With a little bit of difficulty, I've got this together. And one of the other things that's good about this type of cement is if you need to, you can go in and just touch it to a joint, and it will flow in there by capillary action. And so you can reinforce things if they start coming out again. All right, we'll go ahead and set that aside now. Um, the assembly for the escape rocket is still a bit wet. I'm going to do just a little bit of trim work here. There's a little bit of plastic there on the top of it. And then we'll set that aside to go on. Okay, I'm going to come back here, see what else we can do. All right, so for the capsule here, um, it's got three pieces to it here, and there are no um, pins or tabs or little holes to line this up. So this will have to go together edge to edge. And I'm going to have to remove this for a moment. I'll put it aside somewhere else. Okay. It's actually going to go together in this. So the instructions say to make sure that there aren't any plastic pieces. Everything should be nice and flat on these. And then we're just going to test fit them in here. So these go into this ring where it does have a nice little groove going all the way around it. pieces should come together really tightly. Okay, and this will actually cause a little bit of a problem here um, because they're not all circular, they're moving inward. And so it's going to try and bulk a little bit at getting all those pieces in. Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle here. Now there shouldn't be anything in there to make 
polarity or anything like that. So these can go in any place that you can get them to go in. Alright, now I'm assuming this does have to go together pretty precisely, but it's acting like that these are just a little bit too long. And so I'm going to take some very fine sandpaper. This is 320 grit. And I'm just going to take a little bit off the edges here. And I'm not going to do it on all of them. I'm just going to start by doing two sides on one. See if that little bit is enough to get these to fit right. So we'll just do this again. Alright, after multiple attempts and multiple sandings here, I've got this in. Now nothing's glued here, and I've put the escape gantry on top of this to hold the top together while we do the gluing. Okay, so right now this whole part here is just snapped into place. And this is not my favorite way to do this, but we can go ahead and flow in some glue here. Because I'm concerned that if I try and take this apart again, it's just going to completely come apart and not want to go together in the glue. Okay, and then I'm just going to do that one seam there for the moment. And then I'll come around and do the bottom here. And I really wish Estes would have put this together in two halves instead of three thirds. this whole thing together for several minutes. I've taken the escape rocket frame back off of there and I put a rubber band around this and that was not without risk of collapsing this itself. But now this gives me access to the inside here and especially right around the top of the capsule I can glue this from the inside. Okay, looks like here, got a little bit of a gap, and if needed I can fill this in with um, plastic contour putty or paint. Um, most likely I am going to hand paint 
the whole capsule assembly here rather than trying to mask it and spray paint it. Okay, we can come back to the actual escape rocket here. And we just need to attach the top of it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there. And then this plugs in just like that. And try and keep it straight. It's like every time I try and correct it, it's crooked again. Let's try the straight down approach. That looks pretty good. Alright, so we'll let that dry some more. Okay, and I'm just going to let all this glue dry for a bit here before we try and put this all back together. Alright, I've removed the rubber band that was holding it together and I noticed here we've got a little bit of glue that got smeared under the rubber band there. I'll have to touch that up in the, the painting process. But we're about ready to finish putting all of this together. And so, first of all, we need to attach the gantry framework here move it its rubber band okay make sure that nothing has come apart on this it still looks okay okay now we don't really have holes we just have these little indents here but those are going to fit in here oh, we do have one piece that came loose and it's hole there, and I think I'll fix it once we've got it back on. So here, I'm just going to attach by using a drop of glue on the tip of each of these posts. Just a little bit more there. And then I'm going to set this on top. You may have to push just a little bit to get everything through. There we go. And once again, I'm going to have to spend a few minutes just holding this in place to make sure that our glue does not come undone. All right, everything seems to be behaving on this. So now we'll do the final assembly here and attach the two halves together. to let that completely dry for a good hour before going on. While the capsule assembly is drying, we can go on now and start on the engine mount. And for that, we're going to need the card full of rings, and then this small package here that has the actual tube and rings and such, the thrust rings and retaining rings. So we'll go ahead and open that up as well. All right, we're going to need our clip, our thrust ring, motor mount tube, and similar. So coming to our instructions here, um, first we need to cut out F. Let's see here. So F is this one, and then G. So it looks like we're making a reinforcement there. Okay, so here we're just going to cut through the little nubs.
So these are going to get glued together. So this uh, framework here is essentially a reinforcement for the uh, motor mount ring or centering ring there. And I'm just going to use my motor mount here just for a moment to make sure that this is all going to fit when we're getting done with it. That looks pretty good. Alright, so now we just need to take some white glue or wood glue and glue the frame piece here onto the centering ring. Alright, so I'm just going to run a bead of glue around here. It does not need to be thick. In fact, we don't want glue running all over the place. Just a nice thin bead. All the way around here. Okay, and then we're going to center that on the same hole there. And momentarily, I'm going to use my engine tube again to ensure everything is centered on there. And we'll just press all this down, pull that back out so we don't glue it on there yet. Okay, and then uh, I'm just going to put a heavy object on here, like this power pack. And we'll just let that squash down over on the side here for a bit. Um, we can also go ahead and cut out other centering ring. So this is actually the aft ring here. We need to make some marks on the motor mount tube here. So we'll get our tube and my ruler here. There we go. Okay, so from the aft end. I'm actually going to turn this around and use the dirtied up end that I've been working with. So I'm going to make the other end the aft end here. And from the aft end, we are going to measure three spots. Okay, so one is at a quarter inch or six millimeters. Be right there. And another at one inch or 25 millimeters. Be right here. And I'm extending these out a little bit because the engine clip's going to cover part of them. Okay, and then up at two and a half inches or 6.4 centimeters. That's right there. Now, at that last one, we're going to cut a notch. It's about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch wide. And our engine clip will pop into there. Okay. Now, we need to find that retaining ring. So we found that one. It's got to be floating around in this package somewhere. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the retaining ring is going to slip over the forward end of this and down until it reaches that mark. Okay, our middle mark there. So 
We're just going to move that back up a little bit and add a thin bead of glue here. We don't need much. All this is going to do is help hold the clip in place. It doesn't have a lot of strain on it. All right, and we're just going to move that down to that mark. Well, once again, my camera shut off on me here. Apparently it has a clip length of 10 minutes and 46 seconds, and I'm talking too long. All right, so I've glued down the um, retainer ring here, and I've also glued in the thrust ring up at top. And now I'm just letting this dry. The glue on my forward ring here is not completely dry, but it is set. And the same is true of my motor mount tube here. So we can go ahead and assemble this. Now when we do this, let's come back to our instructions for just a moment. Alright, the braced side of the forward ring is going to face forward, so this is going to go in like this. Alright, and then on the aft ring, the um, side that has the actual laser etching on that will go on the will still face the aft when we get this on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do those. And here I'm just going to put a ring of glue that doesn't quite touch the um, engine clip here all the way around. Okay, and then I'm going to... This has got a, a notch right here that fits over the engine clip. And we're going to push this up until we get to our uh, lower mark there. Alright, it went on nice and easy. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to push that glue forward. And then get this relatively level and perpendicular there. And we can just fill it this in. Right, we're a little off. Let's bring that around. There we go. And just make sure that plays freely there. Okay, and then up on the other end, this is going to attach just right on the, the very front of the piece there. So first I'm going to get that over the lip. All right, so I've got a, a little lip here that I'm just going to take a thumbnail and See if I can push that inward. Okay, and I can feel there's some remnants of those nubbins in there. So I'm just going to take some medium grit sandpaper here and just run that around the edge. Just to knock down those little nubs potentially any glue that may have oozed out of there. And we'll see how it all goes together again. That's much better. Alright, so I'm going to bring this... Um, this is going to go right at the very edge here, so I can actually bring it down a little bit till it's resting against the clip. Okay, and then I'm going to put a bead of glue right in front here. And then I'm just going to give it a little twist as I move it forward. And again, we want this to be as perpendicular as we can make it. All right, smooth that glue around into a fillet. And then we're just going to let that whole thing completely dry. While the glue is drying on the motor mount, I'm going to come back to our capsule assembly here. And the, all the glue we put on previously is now dried. And according to the instructions, the last step here is to apply glue to the inside seams of the capsule itself. Now if you'll remember I put some down in this area here while I could reach it. Um, for this it's going to work best to have a long handled swab rather than trying to stick 
the um, glue itself down inside there. So I'm just going to use this. It's essentially a long Q-tip. Um, people ask me where I get these. I get them from Amazon. You can also get them from a variety of scientific supply houses. Uh, but you can buy like you know a thousand of these for around ten bucks, and they're really useful. So I'm using tube type cement this time. I'm just going to put a little dab on here, and then finding the seam, I'm just going to stroke that up, going from the top down. Okay, you, you do want even coverage here, but you don't want big blobs of it. If you get too much glue, it'll melt the plastic and cause it to deform. Alright, and then I'm also going to go around the inside rim here where this collar attaches to the capsule panels themselves. And the same idea here, I want a, an even bead of glue, but I don't want it very thick in any one spot. And depending on how well you glued it the first time putting stuff on there, you may or may not need a lot of glue in here. And as you can see, I'm using my instructions to protect my work surface here. If you don't want to use your instructions for that, put down some paper towels. All right, once again, we'll let this dry. Now, basically from here on out, this part is done, um, except for attaching it to the shock cord and parachute. I am going to paint this by hand off camera. Next, we're going to assemble the body tube shroud, and this will make the transition between the um, main body tube and the capsule. This is mostly laser cut, so we just need to cut the little tabs here. That, and we need this little piece as well. This is going to be used to join the shroud to itself. All right, and then the rest of that can be discarded. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to run this around to onto itself here like this. So this is going to be joined about like that. Um, and what they show here is then using this little piece here um, to glue over that seam. And that will go on the inside. And so here I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this. Um, this will be another instance where you really don't want a heavy amount of glue because it just takes that much longer to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to spread that out into a thin, uniform amount there. Okay, and then if, as we join this back together, I'm going to start it by going ahead and applying this to one end and allowing it to hang over about halfway. And now I'll bring this around join the other end okay. move a little bit on me then just straighten that out All right, I'm just going to hold this here for a minute or two until that grabs and then we'll let this fully dry off camera while the glue is drying on the shroud, we also need to cut out one of these two large rings and it will go on the base of the shroud. Okay, now that is dry enough. Um, this is going to go here. 
looks like it's going to go just at the edges and should fit right along there. Uh, but it's not a perfect fit. So I'm just going to push that up a little bit until we've got good contact. Okay. Now that we know what that's going to look like here, I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. I'm just going to use my finger for this. I'm putting this right inside the edge. Again, we don't want a whole bunch of globby glue in here. Just enough to grab. more. Place that into the glue. Okay, basically you want this at a, a uniform depth. So it's not tilted. Okay, that looks pretty good there. And once again we'll let that dry off camera. Next we need to cut out the fin and tube marking guide and so this is over here on the same page with the shock cord mount and we just want to make sure that we're not cutting anything we need yet. All right, we've already done this part so that's fine. If you don't want to cut this up you can make a photocopy of this page and then cut that out instead. going to want some masking tape handy here. And the larger of the two body tubes. And so we'll just pick one end and I'll write aft on that end. Now this is going to wrap around and this needs to line up right at the edge of the tube. Okay, we want to line up those two tick marks there. And one of the places that we are going to want to cut out is actually right on that seam line there. Okay, let's try and get this as tight as you can without ripping it. Okay, I'm going to put some masking tape here in the middle. And I'm also going to put another piece up here on the edge so that it doesn't slide around the body tube while we're doing this. All right, now this middle one, I'm going to have to move a little bit as we need that fin tab mark exposed. And we shift it a little bit here. that right at the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and put another piece on the opposite side just to help keep this steady. Okay, you're going to want a nice sharp uh, blade in your knife here. Is what we're going to do is cut out each one of these rectangles and that's where the fin tabs will go. And we're also cutting out these trapezoidal sections here. So that in the end, we're going to have little extensions here of the body tube where the fins uh, will be plugging into it. Now on these, it's on the fin tab slots, it's best to start being a little too small than too large. Because you can always widen them a little bit, but it's really hard to make them narrow once more if you get them too big.
we're just going to cut out again these trapezoidal regions. Just make sure when you're holding this that you don't accidentally poke yourself. Carefully take the tape back off. Alright, we should have something that looks like this. All right, so there's a little bit of a curve there. We'll fix that later. I think that's where the uh, joint was. A little bit of one there too. Okay, so to clean these up, um, you can either use your hobby knife or you could use an emery board or a small file. Um, either one is fine. Um, but I'm going to save that until we get to the fins themselves so I can use my fin tabs as measuring guides. Now I've looked through the instructions trying to find where they would have the launch lug line and I can't find where they're actually putting one in. Um, when we get to the attached launch lugs here there's already a line there um, but I don't know how they got to that. So I'm going to take a moment here. And what I'll do is just pick a point in between two of those fin slots there. You can just do this by eye. Uh, or you can use a flexible tape and measure it. My eye was a little off there. That looks better. Okay, and then I'm just going to use um, a tube marking guide here. Estes makes this. You can also just use a door frame or a, a drawer edge. But either way, go ahead and run a line all the way up the body tube there. And then we'll put the launch lugs on later on. I just wanted to have my line in place before we had lots of other things like fins and, and uh, motor mounts and such in the way. Um, and also because when I put my motor mount in, I like to align my engine clip with the launch lugs. So we're going to come back now um, to the section on the motor mount. Okay, so the first thing we're going to install is the motor mount assembly itself. And I'm going to dry fit this first. So we know we don't have anything getting in the way there. Okay, and that aft centering ring is going to go just right at the edge like that. Okay, so a couple of things we need to do here. Um, now they have the engine clip lined up with one of the fins. All right, and that's fine. So I'll just choose the fin that's going to be closest to the launch lug line. Like that. Okay, and we don't want to be able to see the ring within the, the fin slot. So it's going to be right at the edge there. Okay. Um, but we will want that centered like that. So the fin slot should go in between these areas here. Alright, so now um, what they're showing are two rings of glue here. I'm not going to put them on at the same time. So instead here I'm going to get another one of those applicators. You can also just use a small dowel or a scrap piece of balsa, whatever you have on hand. Okay, so first I'm going to put a ring of glue in that's going to be right about where this is going to hit. So I'm going to take my, my glue stick here and put the applicator end on the forward ring. And I'll put my thumb back here at the aft ring as a measuring guide. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to take this and put my thumb uh, in the uncut area here as kind of a guide. And then go ahead and rotate that all the way around in there. Okay, you don't want that too thick, but you want to make sure that you do have an even bead all the way around. If you get it too thick, it's going to grab before you can get it all the way in. We don't want that. All right, now I'm going to take my engine mount and I'm going to put this in just so the forward ring clears but is not in its ring of glue yet. And now I'm going to put a ring of glue right at the edge of my cutouts. Right, now I'm going to realign this. Okay, so I wanted my engine clip to be close to the launch lug line, but lined up with the fin slots. All right, I'm going to turn that till it's centered, and I'm just going to gently push this in. I've already felt it hit the forward glue, and I'm just going to push it until it's even with my cutouts there and my aft ring of glue. 